all this story, so tune into News 8 at 11 for updates on this one. Tears and hugs. Hundreds of students moved into their dorm rooms over at St. John Fisher College campus today. But the freshman dorm experience, as you might imagine, it's going to look very different than in years past because of COVID-19. News 8's Rebecca Fath live for us at St. John Fisher. Rebecca, what are some of the rules for students this semester? Well, Adam, there was a lot of energy here on campus as students said goodbye to their parents and hello to a brand new kind of college experience. It's an emotional moment for the Smith family. How did that hug feel? Huh? That's all I could say. <laughs> it's pretty bittersweet. It's sad to go, but I know I can call them or text them, and it's exciting to start really being feeling like an adult. Isabel drove from Vermont to attend St. John Fisher. She's a freshman who will be living in a dorm room during a pandemic. I'm not that worried for myself, I guess. I know most young people are usually pretty asymptomatic when it comes to COVID. I do want to do my best not to spread to anyone else who might be high risk. The move-in process looks different this year on campus. School officials say months of planning went into what they hope to be a safe reopening. There are some um, guidelines related to the de-densification of classrooms and the number and, and of residence halls and the number of students that can be, for instance, in a residence hall room together as roommates is different than it has been in the past. So that's fewer. Meanwhile, Isabel and her parents say they feel confident about this decision. I feel very confident because I've been following all the Fisher has been very good at uh, keeping us informed about all the steps they were taking. There have been several, um, e lots of emails and webinars. Meeting a bunch of new people and making new friends, hopefully. I heard the food here is really good. And Adam, school officials tell us they feel like today went as well as it could have gone, and they say they hope that students here continue to respect the rules. For now, we are live in Brighton, Rebecca Fath, News 8. Would be nice to get some of that good food amid all of that. We wish students the best of luck. Rebecca, thank you. St. John Fisher is not alone here. Students have also been moving back in on the campuses of the University of Rochester, RIT, and Nazareth College, to name a few. In the midst of these move-ins, some concerns about parties and large gatherings on campus and off. It's already been an issue over at Syracuse University. Check out this. This is the scene this past Wednesday night as crowds of students roamed the campus. The university announced that 23 of its students have been suspended following this gathering and it's reviewing security cam footage to identify more students. College officials there say the actions of the students could lead to a campus shutdown. The university has banned gatherings of more than 25 people. I promise you that good news, so here it is. A local group of sewers has been growing as a community here and making masks for medical staff, Native Americans and migrants. It's called We Are In This Together, Sew Away Corona. That's the group name. Eric Cost has a story for us. I can coordinate, but I can't sew. <laughs> but she may learn. After all, she created an entire community of sewers. Her story starts when one of her friends, a nurse at a local hospital, called her with concern. When this all hit, she called me and she said, oh my gosh, we're going to run out of masks. She's like, can you help? And I'm like, well, I can't sew, but I can coordinate. So she coordinated a group and within a week reached 250 people and it grew and they've collectively sewn over 30,000 masks. And now there's over 500 people ranging from age 10 to 94. People found out about our group and we did a lot of large donations as far as like Heritage Christian, um, the Epilepsy Foundation. And then Native Americans and migrants. What it was is we built it and they came. A group of seniors at Whitney Town Center is also involved in the sewing process. Day says they have a setup in their community room to sew all day. We've made them for stores like Sweet Charity. We've made them for Craig Hospital. We've made them for the Navy. We've made them for group homes. Anybody that needs them. Rody says they're headed towards 7,000 masks in total. It helps us by helping others. None of us knew each other, and then, you know, we formed this, this amazing bond with people. 
She says conversation over design and material helped create camaraderie. In Rochester, Eric had a cost. News 8. What a great story, Eric Cata. Thank you. Day says the group has also received donations from, you know, uh, Joanne Fabrics and also the Amish and Mennonite community. So a lot of people working together in this one. Coming